welcome back to my channel. So today what I decided I am going to do is film a little Q&A kind of thing about mental health and obviously my views on certain things and my experiences with stuff. I opened it up to my Instagram not too long ago and I just got some information of like what you guys want to know about. So quickly just going to run through all of that and chat about it. I just wanted to quickly say before we get started that I am not a professional. So if you are someone that is needing help, please go see a professional. These people are trained in what they do. They know what they're doing. If you need any help, please, please do so but I am available to chat if you guys ever need anything. So yeah, just a little reminder, I'm not a professional. This is just based off my own experiences or my own thoughts and processes on these types of topics. But yeah, so that's it. Let's get started. So the very first mental health talk point is how to be more independent while in a relationship. I have never really been one to be dependent on someone. It's funny because in the three partnerships that I've had in my life, the most dependent Dependent, not dependent, but the most I've ever put into someone would be Steve in this relationship now as I'm doing a bit more committing things like moving to the US. And I feel like sometimes our lives intertwine and they don't stay in their separate lanes. So it's not like Steve does this with his YouTube channel and Morgan does this with her YouTube channel. I feel like sometimes they combine and maybe, I think it's a great thing. I think it's really nice. But my other two relationships that I had, I was super independent. I think that's just, it just comes down to the person that you are. I'm a very independent person. I moved out at age 16 after I finished school. I moved straight out, did everything for four years on the Gold Coast by myself while I was working part-time jobs and I was going to uni. So I learned from a very young age how to be independent and I feel like if you are aren't someone that has been through something like that it is a little bit hard and you do start depending on that person but I would say to just take small steps personally for yourself to do more things that you're wanting to do or to focus more on your work or to have a few more goals individually that you want to do this that and the other separate to your partner I don't even know if I answered that properly, but who sees? We'll see. Past with mental health. So someone touched on this. I have had a pretty good run with mental health things in the past. My family don't have um, any sort of background with that sort of stuff. There's no depression, anxiety or anything like that. I would say my brother may have a little bit of anxiety. He just gets a little bit nervous in some situations. I, again, like I said, I don't really know what anxiety feels like, so I can't comment on it, but I have so many friends and so much family that have that and I can completely understand where they're coming from in regards to it. I haven't really had much problems. Um, the times that I have been down are when serious things have happened. So like one of my best friends, he was um, killed in a freak accident. Um, obviously like grandparents passing away, breaking up with partners, ex-partners cheating on me. Like even in those situations, I let myself hurt. I let myself cry. I let myself accept what's happened. It's hard to say accept because sometimes it took like accepting that my friend had passed took over a year and I still had triggers two, three years down the track. But I've never actually had a problem with mental health side things like anxiety and depression and this, that and the other. Like I said before, we always go through ups and downs, highs and lows but never really had an ongoing steady problem with any of those things. So super grateful for that. And I just put it down to my outlook on life and my upbringing and the people I surround myself with. But I also know that it's so much more than that and that some people just can't get away from it and they need help. Um, so yeah, like I said at the start, if you need help, go see a professional, please. All right. Next one, when you feel down, how do you pick yourself up? I'm a super outdoorsy type of person and it's funny that like this might be a little bit weird as a way to pick myself up, but if I'm ever feeling down, I'll go down to the water. Back at home in Australia, obviously I'm in St. George, so it's a little bit different. I haven't felt down here, so I wouldn't really know what I would do here. I'm sure I would go to a mountaintop at sunset and just watch the clouds roll over and the sun go down. It's just so magical to me. Um, number four, thoughts on psychedelics and mental state. I've never been into drugs. I've never been one to do anything crazy. Like I drink every now and then just for fun because I like the taste of wine. From my point of view, if I had a mental health problem, if I wasn't feeling the best, I definitely wouldn't be going and doing psychedelics. But I have heard in the past that sometimes it helps people. I just don't think that if you're in this state, you should be relying on anything else but 
yourself and talking to someone and getting through it naturally rather than going and using an outsource of something. It's like going and getting, um, I guess, a medication for depression. I know a lot of people, a lot of my friends personally have gone and gotten a medication for depression and it actually made it 10 times worse. And all they really needed was someone to help them and walk them through these things and really get them from that low point in their life to a point where they can handle those things and they know how to work past it. Um, like I, that may not happen for everyone. Like I said, I'm not a professional. That's my thoughts on that. Um, okay. Next one, how has being a social media influencer affected your personal mental health? The best way to put this is that if you are someone who works on social media, you need to learn how to have thick skin. It's not a matter of, oh, you may be lucky and just not get any haters. Everyone gets haters. There's some people that will go so far out their way to put you down, it's not even funny and it can ruin people's lives. For real. I've never really, I've only ever had one time that this has happened to me. It didn't really bring me down too much, but it really pissed me off. It was someone that went so far out of their way to make an account and it was like the real Morgan Rose Marini. And it was photos that had been completely warped and were stated as the original photo, claiming that I have edited this original photo to the real photo that I took, saying that I've inched in my waist, made my ass massive, made my arm arms really, really strong, taken like all this stuff off my face, whitened my teeth, like done all of this editing stuff. And I'm, like I said before, I'm such a natural kind of person. If I don't have those things, I won't make myself have those things. If I don't have a small waist, I'm not gonna force myself to have a small waist because that'll make me feel bad about myself. I'm not gonna edit my own body and my own structure and my own photos just to make myself look like X, Y, Z, because then that turns back around on me and goes, you're not enough. Like that's literally you yourself telling you that you're not enough. Anyway, so that's the only time that I've really had anything. The other time has actually been recently since dating Steve. Obviously he's got a quite large following on YouTube, Instagram, all that sort of stuff. In the past, I've never really had any problems with um, girls or anything in my pages other than like the odd jealousy message and this, that and the other. But I've gotten quite a little bit of hate in comments and stuff that I've just ended up deleting. Just saying like, I'm not womanly enough. I'm too young. I, he, um, a lot of people compare me to his exes cause he has in the past put his relationships out on, on social media. And as hard as that is, I, I know my worth. Like I'm, I'm super happy with myself. I, it just, I can understand how other people that may not have as thick of skin as I do, it could really, really stuff them up. But it's something that you need to learn to not take personally and not even really give time or effort into the thought of it. And then I guess there's one more thing with social media is the comparison kind of thing in, not in regards to people comparing you, in regards to you comparing yourself to other people. There's been so many quotes and stuff out there where it's like, if you have an idol, don't go and meet them because you're gonna be disappointed. I've heard that so many times by so many people. And I think that's really sad that we live in a world where people are portraying this persona and this even, not even if it's physical, like mentally, like if you're someone who's not putting your real personality, your real thoughts, your real life stuff out onto the internet, how is that gonna come back and bite you in the bum? You wanna be as genuine as possible, not just for the people to see what you're like, but also for you and how you feel about how you present yourself on social media. Anyone who does present themselves in a genuine way can completely agree that social media can be the best thing ever if you are doing it like that. But if you are doing it in that light where you're sort of trying to push someone forward that you're not, it would weigh so much on yourself and your like your mental health and stuff that it would just be long-term effects would just be so negative. All right. So next one, how do I cope with loneliness? I don't cope with loneliness. I actually really enjoy lonely times. I, the only time that I've really felt like it's gotten me down in dumps is I came and spent three months here with Steve and Alec last year and I went back home and because my family, my best friend Tanya, they all work full time. I got home and I was like, what am I doing with my life? Like my days were filled of literally just me and my dog constantly. And I was like, what am I doing? Like, I need to be more proactive. I need to do this. I need to do this. And it got to a point where I started, I was like, I miss Steve so much, but really I didn't think it 
like the baseline was that I missed Steve a lot. It was just the fact that I wasn't busy and I can't deal with not being, not doing stuff constantly. So I think that was my like closest I felt to being lonely, but I'm just someone who thrives off being by myself. Moving on. Thoughts on finding the right therapy counselor or support group. My thoughts are 1000% for this. Like I said at the start of the video, you, if you are suffering with anything, quite literally anything, talk to someone who has literally studied this and they know things. They've spoken to so many people in your situation and can help you because the main reason as to why a lot of my girlfriends are sort of out of the dumps, they're so much better, they're thriving in life because they had support groups, because they had an amazing counselor. So 100% for it, even if you don't feel like you've got something on, even if it's tickling on the edge of like, oh, I have a little bit of anxiety, go see someone for it because you could probably completely and utterly get rid of that or find ways to deal with that. Um, if you're just going up and checking in with counselor every now and then. Hey, have you ever had any insecurities? Insecurities, like one thing that I could go, mm, no, mm, yes, not really. I, growing up, like I've had a boob job and growing up, I was like, mm, should I, should I get one? Like, what's a go? My mum had one, my grandma has one, my auntie has one, like everyone in my family has a boob job because I guess we're all very small boobed women. And I wouldn't really say it was an insecurity though because before I got it, I loved my little boobs. Like I loved them so much. It's not really an insecurity. I didn't get it for the fact that I knew it was gonna make me feel more confident because I'm a very confident person. But yeah, it was just something that I wanted to get done. I feel like a lot of people think that insecurities are like a physical thing on their bodies. Like, oh, I don't really like my legs. That's my insecurity or Oh, I'm jealous, that's my insecurity. I don't really, I wouldn't really say insecurities are those kind of things. They're a little bit more deeper than that. It comes from past experiences, this, that, and the other. Um, and like I said before, when we're talking about relationships, my one of my exes cheated on me so many times. And I guess going into my second relationship, I had insecurities with the basic, basic things like my ex following all these girls that he used to date or whatever. Like that was my insecurity. I was like, why do you feel the need to follow this person? Why do you need to message them? Why do you like all their photos? So there was that kind of thing, but I had to deal with that and go, what the fuck Morgan, you're crazy. Like, why are you being like this? And then I realized it was because of the past experiences with my ex. And it's so funny because we get told about this all the time. Like, oh, my ex fucked me over and now I'm psycho with my next boyfriend. It's like, no, that's, that's not an excuse. But then when it happens to you, you're like, oh shit. Like maybe I am. So I dealt with mine very quickly. Um, within like the first year of my relationship with my ex, I had completely just got that shit out of my brain. And now I'm super chill because I realized that people stay around because they love you and they have the right intentions and they have good morals. And if they decide to stuff something up, then that's their fault, their loss onto the next. That sounds so bad, but it's true. <laughs> um, okay, next. Opinion on friends with mental health issues. Not a problem at all. I don't see why anyone would have an opinion on this. If you are a true friend and you have a friend with a mental health issue, you should be doing everything you can to help that person. It's just, it's so much more than just the people you surround yourself with. Of course, like your support system, me, my friend. So let's say a friend, any friend, I, I'm not gonna name any. If I have a friend that is feeling down or she's sad or blah, 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 I can help her to the extent that that's what I can do. But until she wants to do something for herself, until she wants to feel better, until she wants to go and seek help from a professional, I can't be pushing her constantly to do it because that may make her feel worse. It may make her feel inadequate and it may belittle her even more than what she already feels like. So I will be there to support 110%, but then, it's supporting her in her decision whether she decides to go get help or not and always just being there to check in. Like it's, it, you can only do so much as an outside source coming in and you gotta try and I guess help them understand that if they can, if they want to get help, if they want to feel better, then we should be doing steps. We should be taking steps to make that happen. Opinion about unqualified people giving advice online. As I said at the start of this video and I've literally mentioned like hundreds of times later, um, I don't I don't mind about people giving their opinions, but they need to state that it's their opinion and that it's not from qualified people. I get girls asking me all the time, what do you eat? What's your thing? Do a day in the life of eating. And I'm like, mm, no, because my eating works for me, but it may not work for you. And also, if you're wanting to get some sort of meal plan or meal ideas or this, that, and the other, you should speak to someone who knows about food, who knows more than what I do, which is literally like the base layer of food. Okay. 
Um, a couple more. How I deal with moving and being away from family for so long. So I haven't actually moved yet to the US. I am going to in July, hopefully, but it's sort of something where it is hard. I'm someone who I don't, I'm not good with communication online. So when I'll speak to my parents, I'll speak to Tanya, I'll speak to my brother at least once a week. And that's, that's it. Like that's all I really want to talk to them for. I don't want to be constantly calling them and constantly in contact with them because I'm doing so much thing, like so many things over here. But the more I speak to them, I, I don't know what to talk about. I'm like, okay, so what, what have you done today? But when I'm there in person, then you can go do things. I'm more of a doer than a talker. Unless I've got something topic wise that I need to talk to someone about and get off my chest. I can't sit and talk for hours. Like I need to go for a walk or I need to go get sushi or I need to go to the gymnastics center. I'm, I'm more of a doer. So dealing with my family being away, I miss them a lot. I miss Tanya a lot. I miss my brother a lot. I miss my dog so much, but I've just sort of accepted that you have to give up some things to get forward in other things. I respect my relationship enough to try and push that to get to a point where I'm super happy with. I'm so happy right now, but I know there's so many things to come in the future, like moving, like bringing my dog over, like doing this, that, and the other. And my career, like, Inevitably, the US is the place for me if I'm working online, it's just how it works. You can only get to a point so high in Australia before it's like, okay, I wanna be doing bigger and better. I wanna be able to travel two hours to get to a Gymshark shoot instead of 18 hours on a flight. Instead, when I move to the US, I'll be doing two hour flights for those same amount of times. And then I can travel back home once or twice a year and actually enjoy my time back home, not being worried about work or anything like that. So that's sort of where that decision came from. I wrote down two little points as well, just to finish off this little mental health chat. And it's pretty much like what I tell quite a lot of people is that firstly, social media is something that can be great or it can be bad with the way you use it. If you jump into social media with a negative thought process in your mind or you're in a negative state, I wouldn't go and sit on social media. It's not going to help. It's not going to do anything for that mental state of mind. If you're in a positive outlook or you're just a very neutral kind of mood, then for sure, jump on social media, it's totally fine. Check who you're following. If you're following people that provide you nothing wholesome or content wise is fulfilling what you need when you go on Instagram, you need to get rid of them. And then with changing mindset, I get this question quite a lot. I've read up a statistic. I literally wrote it down because I was like, I need people to know this. 95% of your thoughts come from your subconscious. So when you're thinking about things or when you're feeling things, they are coming from your subconscious majority of the times. And if you want to change your mind, if you want to change your like positivity, what's in your thought processes, you have to build that up from your subconscious really hard to understand. But pretty much what you have to do is just train your subconscious to be thinking more positive thoughts than negative thoughts. And then the more and more that you do that, the more it'll get into a habit and then it will start doing that naturally. And then you are freaking set for life. Um, that's pretty much it. That's all I wrote down. I didn't really want to go too much into depth. If you guys want to see any more videos on this, leave some comments below. Uh, I do love sitting down and chatting to you guys about topics that I feel are important. So if you have any of those, again, leave them down in the comments below and I will see you guys on my next video. Thank you for watching.